Welcome to a new Lightroom Classic tutorial. In this video, we will give this panoramic landscape image some lovely vibrant golden hour light, way stronger orange and yellow color tones, and maybe do some dodging and burning with Photoshop later. So without much more talking, let's jump into it. As always, if you want to follow along, you can find the raw files in the description of the video. As I said in the beginning, this is a panoramic image. That means I have merged several vertical shots into a bigger one like this. If you don't know how to merge a panoramic image, that's pretty easy. You just select all the images down there in Lightroom like this. I'm only selecting every third image since I was shooting a HDR bracketed series. And once you have your selection, just right click on them and then head to Photo Merge Panorama. This process may take a while depending on your system. For this image I didn't change anything, I just used the basic settings and hit the merge button. You will end up with an image like this, but of course I have already cropped it a little bit to get rid of all those gaps at the border of the image. And just frame the mountains in a more pleasing way. Alright, but let's get into the editing. The base image is pretty good, the histogram is almost perfectly exposed as you can see. We do have a little bit of an exposure but that's not a big deal since it's only in that tiny area down here which is not important at all for this image. So first off let's head into the basic tab and change the profile to Adobe Standard. This will lessen the contrast a bit. I really like the soft look this profile adds to this image so I'm going with this one for now. For the white balance we can play around a little bit, but in this case I just want to go with the auto setting, which as you can see makes the whole shot a lot warmer, which is fitting for the sunrise, which is going on right there. So this looks pretty good as well. Next up I do want to bring down the highlights and this is just to reveal some more details in the fog in the distance. Of course this will also bring down the histogram a little bit, so to counter that I'm going to bring back the whites. But of course we are still keeping the details in the clouds, so that's perfect. Actually, let's tone it down a bit here. Alright, then I also want to bring up the blacks and let's see if I can fix the underexposure. It's not that dramatic if it's still in here, but that's looking pretty good. Okay, now that was it for the tone adjustments. I do want to give this image some more texture. Also, let's add a bit of clarity. And I even want to add some dehaze, which is great for contrast, just like that. All right, finally, let's pump up the vibrance since I want this image to be colorful. Okay, here we are after the base adjustments. Looks pretty good to me. Most important change was probably the white balance making this whole scene a lot warmer. Now, I can enchant this some more using a few local adjustments. So let's open up the masks menu. And first off, I want to work on the mountain range in the center. Therefore, I'm using the brush tool. And as you can see, I have activated the auto mask tool, which should help me create a better selection of the mountain range. So let's just roughly paint over them. Doesn't need to be very precise here. I also don't want the mountains in the foreground, just there in the center. That's looking good. Now in here, let's just bring up the exposure. Just a little bit. I don't want to make it too obvious, but that looks good. At the same time, I want to introduce some more contrast. And I also want to bring up the whites. So the highlights of the mountains are brighter than before. All right, looks good. Maybe even some clarity. All right, then next I do want to add some glow coming in from the right side. Therefore, as usual, I'm using a radial gradient and let's create a rather small one like this. I don't want to overdo it. Then we need to rotate it to fit the sunlight direction. And I'm just placing it at the border of the image like that. And in here, I'm going to pump up the blacks. Uh, let's maybe bring it down a bit here. All right. And I'm also going to introduce some temperature, giving this area some warmer light. Perfect. Finally, I do want to try something different. Let me create a linear gradient. 
and I'm basically covering the whole image except the foreground. So just like that. And in here I'm going to bring down the blacks which should add some more contrast to the mountains without affecting the rest of the image. Alright, that looks good. I think I can also bring up the highlights a notch. Just for some more contrast. Okay, I'm pretty happy with those local adjustments. I also guess that's it for them for now. Next up, let's do the color grading. And I'm starting this in the HSL tab with the hue. Right away, I can already tell I really don't like those green color tones. So what I'm doing in this case is to simply drop the green hue all the way down, giving them more of a yellow color tone. In this case, this doesn't have a big impact, so I'm also going to drop the yellow hue. And since this effect is stronger, I'm not going to drop it too much here. Okay, now let's head over into the saturation tab. Here, I'm bringing up the orange saturation and then I'm dropping the yellow saturation and then raise the blue saturation. Okay, perfect. Uh, finally, I'm heading into the luminance tab. Here, let's bring up the orange luminance, which will affect mostly the bright parts of the mountains in the foreground. I can do the same with the yellow colors, just like that. And that's looking pretty good. You can see before and after the HSL adjustments, that's quite the big change here. Let's do some more color grading with the split toning. I'm starting with the highlights and here I do want to apply a very warm hue to fit the sunrise of course. So let's go somewhere in this range and pump up the saturation. Just like that. All right. For the midtones, I'm doing basically the same thing with the warmer hue, but I'm going to use a lower saturation. Just like that, should be enough. All right, finally, I'm heading into the calibration tab. And here I do want to bring down the blue primary hue. I'm going to bring it down quite a bit and pump up the saturation here. At the moment, I think I need some more saturation. So let's head back to the HSL adjustments in the saturation tab. And I want to bring back the yellow saturation, maybe even increase it a bit. I actually also want to pump up the orange saturation quite a bit more. I think it just works better with those heavy orange tones. All right, much better. So at this point, this is basically the editing for the Lightroom part. Now, of course, up there in the corner, you can still see some gaps. And also, I am not satisfied with the horizon since it not seems to be straight. And I also told you about the dodging I want to do in the beginning of the video. So at this point, I do want to head over to Photoshop and let's see what we can do to finalize this image. So here we are in Photoshop and first, of course, I want to fill those gaps up there. I guess I'm just using the lasso tool to create a rough selection, just like that. Hit Shift F5 and select Content Aware and hit OK. That's looking good. Let's do the same on the other gap. Perfect. I do have a feeling there's a dark streak going through the sky on the left side. So I'm going to use the clone stem tool and again, just hope I can fix it that way. But I think that looks much better. All right. Next up, let's work on the horizon. For that reason, I'm going to duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J, just so I have a backup layer and I'm creating a guideline by clicking on that ruler up here and just drag the mouse down like this. And this way I'm able to see if the horizon is straight or not. Then I'm hitting Ctrl T to bring up the transformation, right click and choose warp. With the warp tool, I'm going to try to make the horizon straight. Just like that. Okay. And this seems to be a lot better. Now, another thing I might want to try is to scale it just vertically to make the mountains a little more dramatic. So again, I'm hitting Ctrl T and this time I'm just stretching the image up a little bit. The sky isn't that important for the shot anyway. So let's just 
scale it up like 10%. This shouldn't reduce the image quality too much, but it looks so much better. Okay, I can play around with the positioning of the whole image. Give it a little more sky maybe. That's looking really good. Now for the dodging part. Therefore I will create a new layer, switch the blending mode to, I guess I'm using overlay. And to dodge images, I'm usually using the TK panel plugin. And with this plugin, I'm simply going to select those bright parts in here. So I'm using a lights mask. You can see the lights to mask is selecting those highlights in the mountains pretty good. So I'm using this one. Apply it as a layer mask, then use the brush tool with a white color. And maybe let's lower the brush opacity as well. And now I am just going to brush over those bright spots. All right, that looks much better. So at this point, I might want to check the Nick Collection plugin. So let's merge everything and then head over to the filter menu. Nick Collection Color Effects Pro 4. I do want to start this by using the Pro Contrast filter. Here I just want to increase the correct contrast slider, making the mountains a little darker. I'm also going to add a negative control point right there in the darkest area, because I really don't want to underexpose this part. All right, looking very, very good. Let's see if we can add anything else. Maybe we could give the polarization effect a try. I think it does look pretty good. So let's use it like that. And again, I'm using a negative control point since right here in the foreground, this effect is way too heavy. Okay. Then I do want to also try the skylight filter. As you can see, this makes the whole shot a lot warmer. Uh, maybe just a little bit. But of course, I don't want to overdo it. This is a super strong filter, so just be careful with this one. Again, I'm adding negative control points. That's almost perfect for me. Let's add it like this. Okay, that looks super cool, so I'm going to stop this video at this point. As always, if you have any questions about the editing process, let me know in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.